All right, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the first live stream of This Is Automation Live. Uh, I'm your host, Corey Dallas. Um, really excited to be bringing you this content in a new format over video. Uh, many of us I know around the globe are working remote, so we wanted to, to kind of put together this this new style to, to you know meet you where you are at home. Uh, hopefully uh, you're, you're comfortable in your PJs or something, or, or maybe in your home office. Um, but hopefully this new video format is going to be really valuable for everybody out there to, to continue to share knowledge in the automation community about BNR specific stuff, um, as well about, you know, general automation topics. So the first thing I want to say is thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and, uh, subscribe to any of the upcoming live streams, uh, that are out there. And, um, we're really excited to have you here. And if you have any questions, comments, Make sure you uh, drop those in the chat window below, and uh, we'll try to get to those um, either at the end of the episode or as we kind of uh, walk through. So today, um, as I'm sure you can see by the, the logo floating above my head here, uh, we're going to be talking about BNR, uh, which is not uh, exceptionally abnormal for us, um, but today we're specifically going to be talking about the mobile automation platform and kind of an introduction to that. And so BNR's mobile automation platform uh, uh, that term mobile really evokes uh, many different thoughts in people's minds. So what we're calling this is rugged control. So really um, the mobile automation platform is uh, a ruggedized control platform that's made for off-highway, it's made for agriculture, construction, AGVs, uh, you know, AGVs and cold storage, these kind of harsh environments uh, where you need controls and maybe a traditional, you know, DIN rail mounted X20 solution, IP20 solution is, is not gonna be the right fit. So that's what we'll be talking about today. We're gonna do a quick uh, introduction to the platform and that's gonna lead into our next live stream on Thursday. Uh, so make sure you mark your calendar for that where we're gonna be talking about the new uh, rugged PC and BNR's platform. We're gonna be talking about a lot of use cases for that. So uh, yeah, make sure you uh, get plugged in for that. And let's go ahead and get started. So today we have Chris Petro with us. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get uh, Chris uh, dialed in. So how's it going, Chris? Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, happy to have you. Um, thank you for, for making the time to, uh, to join us for this discussion. Um, Chris, can you give us a quick introduction to, to who you are? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Chris Petro. I work for BNR. I'm a sales engineer there based out of the Atlanta office. And um, my territory focus is typically Georgia, South Carolina. So uh, I do a lot of, I guess, um, you know, prospecting locally. Yep. And Chris and I work, work hand in hand on, on projects. Uh, so normally we're, we're either in the office or on the road together, but uh, now we are together, but remote. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> today is, I guess, what, day 10 of, of the quarantine. <laughs> That's right. So we're, we're all hunkered down in our, our home offices, but uh, we're still uh, working hard uh, in the automation community. So uh, we teased it enough. I think uh, we're going to be talking about rugged controls. And uh, really, the, the core of that platform starts with uh, the BNR X90 controller. So I'll go ahead and kick it over to Chris, and uh, you can give us a quick introduction to, to the X90. Yeah, for sure. So the X90, and this is a, a great picture here, so I'm just going to talk through that. The X90 really fully encapsulates this kind of rugged uh, exterior and very, um, I guess, dynamic interior, right? So the outside is a cast aluminum housing. So this is going to offer you the protection that you'll you'll need in your typical environment um, conditions that you would might see in in the mobile space. Um, so this offers you the the minus forty to the plus eighty five degrees C operating temperatures. And then along with that, um, being press fit from the factory, you're getting the the tested resistance to shock, the vibration testing, um, UV lights, and uh, and oil just just to name a few, I guess. Um, the inside consists of the, an ARM architecture. So um, the, the main board here has 24 uh, or 48 main board multifunction IO. Uh, there's three CAN networks, an ethernet port, and then also a, a real-time bus that's integrated. Um, and I know I, I talked a little bit about the option boards, but the option boards um, allow you to kind of I guess it's an additional layer, so to speak, of, of functionality or flexibility here. So we have, uh, there's multifunction IO channels that come with it, condition monitoring for vibration measurement, uh, current measurement output, 
um, different interfaces, and then even the the full fledged safety um, controller with Safe IO embedded as well. And now, Corey, I thought I saw one in the back there or on your desk. Can you show us one the the X ninety that you have? Yeah, sure. So I do I do happen to have one here, uh, right uh, in my my lap actually. Uh, so you can see exactly what Chris is talking about the aluminum housing here. Um, on the front, the CMC connectors that has all your I.O. And, and your CAN network, as well as the two M12 Ethernet uh, ports over there. One of them being the uh, standard Ethernet and the other one being your uh, Ethernet power link. Um, so this is a, a somewhat special X90 in that the, uh, the top comes off of it. So I'll uh, take that off. There's the uh, top housing there. And we can take a look inside the X90. So the uh, production ones don't come this way. That would be a nightmare if you could just take the top off of your uh, IP69K controller, but this is a, a special one. So um, here you can see the main board that Chris was talking about. So this, this part here is the main board with all the different multifunction I.O. on it. And then if we kind of turn it sideways here, you can see the option board. So this, this uh, piece here is one of the option boards. So this specific unit is configured with one option board. Um, but you can kind of see where the spacing for the, the other three option boards would be. So, so one more out to this side and then one here and one here. Um, and uh, you can also see how these get press fit in at the factory. So those are all press fit joints there to make sure that we can meet those stringent uh, shock and, and vibration requirements. Yeah, that's, I love that demo. <laughs> it's a good one. So um, I guess that's going to lead us into the, the bus controller. And the bus controller has a very similar uh, form factor to that of the X90 in terms of its ruggedized exterior. Uh, it's a bit smaller um, in size. But basically, this bus controller, there's, there's a few, I guess, talking points. And Corey, chime in here if you, if you feel so inclined. But um, basically, the, the, the bus controller offers a, some sort of decentralized control um, acting as, you know, basically you can, you can tie this into an existing system that you've had currently. Or, of course, if you're using the X90, then you can use it for some additional I.O. points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we see this being used in kind of like one of two different cases. One is, is kind of like you're saying is, is a... I've got the X90 and I've got all the option boards and the main board selected, um, but I have some, some maybe some IO points that I need on the other side of the system, or maybe I want to like control the transmission or something through, through a, a, a slip joint or something like that, a slip ring. And I don't want to carry all my IO points across it. Uh, so instead I'll just, you know, drop one can uh, network uh, line over to the bus controller and have some some sort of decentralized architecture where my exactly. my IO is remote. And then the other way is you know maybe the X90 just doesn't have enough IO on it. And in that case, you can drop in the additional um, you know remote IO modules. Get your you know I think it's 32 IO points uh, for for every module, and those are multifunction as well. And, and I think the other thing that's important to note on this is you know since it's a, a CAN um, IO device you can use it in any architecture. So not necessarily where the X90 is, is the main controller, but in any uh, sort of architecture. So we do have customers out there using the X90 bus controller in a system that is not maybe not a BNR controlled system. So that's another uh, nice bit of flexibility that you can get uh, when, when you're using the, the bus controller. Yeah, and it's a pretty simple use case, right? Uh, to, to pair it with, with something that's other than a, a BNR device. Yep, exactly. So I guess to, to complete uh, part of the product portfolio, we have our, our HMIs, our visualizations. And um, this, I guess, to, to stay uh, uniform with the rest of the, the product portfolio, you'll find another um, cast aluminum housing. We have uh, a few status LEDs on the front. There's an Ethernet port, uh, some USBs. So. I guess a really a really useful um, HMI to use in a, in a mobile application. Yeah, for sure. And you know, this product is called the MT50. So there's kind of an analogous industrial product called the T50. Exactly. And uh, the cool thing about that is the firmware that they're running on is basically the same. So as far as how you set it up, you know, what options are available, it's uh, very consistent and scalable across the platform. And scalability is something we'll, we'll touch on in, in just another minute. Um, but uh, the, the other nice thing about this MT50 is it has an OPC UA server running on it. And uh, OPC UA is just a uh, communication protocol. 
And so what you can do is actually from the X90 uh, or other controllers is send these you know, OPC UA method calls and set OPC UA values uh, to control uh, in a very intelligent way the, the display. So you can set you know, screensaver, you can set um, you know, the IP address of the device, you can you, know, you wake it up or make it go to sleep. Uh, those kind of things all remotely over the ethernet connection. Uh, so it's very fast, very reliable, very efficient, um, and uh, very scalable again. Exactly. And one thing that I wanted to kind of reemphasize is, you know, I, I don't know if everybody listening is familiar with the T50, but in, in the industrial world, this is a very simple device to configure. And, um, you know, for so th this works for the, the VNC viewer as well as a web viewer and can pair with with a non BNR device, right? So if you were broadcasting your your uh, your web based HMI, then this is something that you could use the the mobile T uh, fifty with as well. Yeah, exactly. So like in the BNR architecture, you know, if you're using this as a web terminal, you'd be looking at something like MapView. Um, and again, in the BNR architecture, if you're using it as a VNC viewer, you'd be looking at the Visual Components four package, which is more of like your traditional HMI package. But mm -hmm. since this is, yeah, kind of a, a flexible product, you could use it to access other VNC solutions or other web-based solutions. And we have customers doing that as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I think this kind of bridges us nicely into the next topic, which is Automation Studio. And uh, I, I really feel like that automation, you know, it's, it's really great for a company to have a good product in terms of, in terms of hardware. Um, but Automation Studio, I, I really do feel that it bridges the gap between having an effective product and having really an effective solution. So this is, it, it really kind of uh, enables customers to kind of like, I don't know, build and defend their, their competitive edge as the technology leader in their market. And, uh, and, and feel free, obviously, Corey, to chime in here too. But BNR has, has decades of experience uh, in the automation world. And I, I think you talked about this a little bit in the beginning. Um, but you'll notice, you'll notice this experience when you work with Automation Studio and, and being able to use this um, along with our very scalable product in terms of the hardware. Yeah, and it's, it's honestly like a disservice to have three slides on hardware and just one slide about Automation Studio because Absolutely. like when you look at, uh, you know, the available control platforms out there, they're all going to have, you know, rugged hardware, right? If, if you're looking at a rugged machine, you're going to have to put rugged controls on there. But really what we're seeing in the market is like where you, where you differentiate is on the software level. So hardware is becoming somewhat of a commodity and, and don't get me wrong. There are special things about our hardware and things that, about our hardware that, that are, you know, designed in a really elegant way to work for, uh, you know, the OEM machine market, but software is really where people differentiate. So when you're looking at a platform, I think software is where you should spend maybe 60 to 70 plus percent of your time yeah, instead absolutely. of looking at the hardware, right? And <clears throat> one of the things that, that BNR has done in Automation Studio and Automation Runtime specifically is uh, handle the back end very uh, flexibly. So that means that we have scalability across, you know, not just the X90 uh, portfolio, but across other platforms as well. So if you look at the industrial controllers being the X20 series uh, and the mobile controllers being the X90 series, the software development tools and uh, actually the software itself um, is the exact same for either of those options. So, right. so not only, you know, between the platform, which can be powerful for, for some machine builders, if they're looking at, uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, one option that is uh, has a certain protection level and then another one with a different protection level, uh, but things within the platform too, like uh, if you have a safety version of your controller or if you have a version with different option boards. Uh, so maybe you need the lowest end X90 for one machine and then the highest end X90 for another one. And there's some stuff in between. All of the software tools get shared between those, which is really powerful. And then the, the last thing on, on scalability is, is looking at forwards and backwards scalability. So we've kind of been looking at one instant in time across the platform, but what about uh, moving beyond that, you know, to to the next generation of products. And so when we look at the X100 or, or whatever it's gonna be, I don't have that, that level of insight yet, but um, whenever the X90 gets obsolete, it's all being handled in the back end of automation runtime to make sure that your code is scalable from generation to generation. And that that is like one of the, I think, biggest values that automation runtime brings to an OEM is that when we release the next generation of 
a system. You don't have to redesign any of your code. You don't have to change anything. It's going to be fully forwards and backwards compatible. So all you have to do is, is literally an automation studio. It's a right click, change hardware, pick the new hardware module. And uh, you're, you're pretty much up and running at that point. Exactly. Yeah, I think um, just to kind of reiterate that point, Corey, it's like the, the hardware independence is, uh, that you get uh, in using Automation Studio really does enable the our customers to be able to meet the needs of, of their customers, right? I mean, how mm -hmm. many times has one of your customers said, hey, you know, I have a, uh, a machine, but I, I have to make some, you know, tweaks to it. I have to do some custom aspect to the machine, um, how, you know, and now they're, they're spending time developing their current series machine, but then also adding this custom functionality that their customer wants. So now you're, in, you're really enabling this kind of like concurrent engineering and, and offering this a solution that really gives you guys the flexibility that they're that they're gonna need to meet their needs yeah for sure so i think that's kind of uh, gonna wrap up our our quick intro um maybe we can sh tease one more thing so again the rugged pc is kind of the one piece of the the automation portfolio that the mobile automation portfolio that we left out of this discussion so it's so special that it deserves its own uh, discussion. So we'll be talking exactly. about that Thursday, March 26th uh, at 10 a.m. So put that on your calendar. Make sure you set up notifications uh, if, if that's something interesting for you. And uh, you know, if you're looking at artificial intelligence, semi-autonomy, full autonomy, um, those kind of things, vision processing, object detection, if those things are important to you or sound interesting, I would definitely uh, tune into that one because we'll be talking about all that kind of stuff. So. Chris, thank you for uh, for joining us for this and giving us kind of a quick rundown. Um, you know, I think the big takeaway that I have from from the discussion is is really the flexibility and scalability of the the, the platform from you know a, a hardware perspective with the option boards and the different processors and everything, but also on the software side uh, built into automation runtime. And you know, one of the other things that, that we didn't even really talk about is is kind of how to leverage those those libraries in kind of new and interesting ways, like. BNR's pretty well-developed robotics kernel can be used to control, you know, the serial kinematics of an excavator arm, for example. So it's it's right. basically the, the same concepts, right, but being applied in new ways. So exactly. those things are, are really, really exciting. Um, any final words or, or final takeaways from your side? Yeah, I, and I, I think there's actually a few that come to mind. I guess the first one in regards to the uh, the, the mobile PC, if anybody knows, uh, anybody that's listening now knows our PCs um, that are not in the mobile form factor, they should, I guess, be very aware of the, of the power that they bring. So they would probably already be interested in, in maybe watching the, the mobile presentation in a couple of days. Um, and then the, the the next point that I wanted to bring up is is I think there should be a, a, probably a, a full discussion on just Automation Studio in general, right? The the map technology is a huge aspect that we didn't even talk about um, for the product portfolio. So anyway, uh, and then the third option is the 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 branding, right? I mean, we we mm -hmm. custom brand label a lot of our products, and and that's including the the mobile uh, platform as well. So, uh, and and maybe you can show the the demo again. But basically, we have uh, our B and R logo on on the front there, and uh, that that would be laser etched with a you know your company logo. Basically, I don't know if they'll they'll be able to see it very well but yeah so th this is what chris is talking about here uh that that bnr logo um you know one, one of the things that that is important for bnr is to be oem focused so that custom branding is something that you know pretty much on any product is is an option so yeah and at least the customers that have used it in the past it's uh it's a pretty slick pretty slick thing i like it <laughs> awesome. well thank you anyway, chris that's all i got i appreciate it thanks for joining and thank you everybody that that dialed in and uh, anybody that's going to watch the recording of this, uh, we appreciate you uh, joining us for the conversation. Again, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, subscribe uh, notifications for the uh, future live streams, and make sure you tune into those. And uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, directly by, by email or on LinkedIn. All that information should be in the, uh, the info box below. And uh, thanks for joining us this time, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks, Corey.